and this guy's just sitting like like that. And he looks up and goes like he went. Winked at you. Because he basically played me like a fiddle. So with, with these with police interrogations, I'm fascinated by police interrogations. Yeah. I can watch hour, two hour long ones, right? Like the raw CCTV film yeah. and stuff. And and um, on YouTube now, you probably have Jim Can't Swim, G, uh, yeah. J, JCS. Yeah. yeah. It's like the big one, isn't it? Where they yeah. like dissect it. Um, something that you could obviously do, like you could be behind that channel. Like that's, sure. that's your, your, your line of work. Say Stevie and I, we get arrested today for something we didn't do. What's the because I've watched so much of that, I yeah. actually think it would work badly on me because I would start to pick up on all, all the things they tell you not to do. Sure. What, what, are the, what are the things we should be doing to prove our innocence? I think basically it's in the way you speak. Innocent people tend to have an air about them. Um, they, don't, they don't tend to remain calm. Guilty people tend to have this stillness about them. Whereas an innocent person, they generally do kick off. Panic, sure. This is what I thought. Me and Fee always speak about this. So I think you mentioned a similar thing earlier on, Darren. But like, say, for example, I say to Stevie, like, oh, I, I, I saw you I saw you stab that dog last night. It's going, what the, f what the fuck are you? Yeah, whereas, yeah, whereas, whereas, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you would be so animated where you see it on YouTube and they go, no, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't do that. And it's a calmness, yeah. yeah. Also, there's when someone's accused of something, there's a calculation takes place in someone's mind and it's literally f quicker than we can possibly fathom, like, you know, thousands of a second. And it's basically, am I going to front this out? Am I going to be honest? Right. And it's in that hesitancy where the body actually does give a lot of seat leakage signals. Mm. Um, so people that are, that are innocent, you can, you can generally tell mm. that they will. They will not so much like start far fighting, but their level of, of just like loudness. Look, mate, I did, you know, I mean, you can see the frustration. Yeah. I worked on a very famous case in India. It's on, um, I think it's been transmitted already. It's a four-part documentary and it's India's biggest double murder. Um, and they're basically this, this um, husband and wife couple were doctors and I'll send you a link to it. Um, they were accused of murder. So the daughter and one of three servants were murdered overnight. One of the throat, they always had the, sl the throat slit. The police stormed in and just trampled the crime scene. So it was a real pig's ear, basically. Yeah. Those two got arrested and eventually went to prison. And then I was contacted by a production company, and then several of the forensic people were contacted. So I was sent all this CCTV for not CCTV, um, interview footage mm -hmm. and um, footage from home movies, things like that. They, they'd already had a body language person look at it. And when she was being interviewed, the, the mother, she always adopted this posture. Right. So, so psychology would say that's defensive. You know, she's her shoulders are in, blah blah blah. But they didn't take the time to look at this the the home movie footage from years ago. She she's done that gesture since she was fourteen. The mother. Oh. So it was it was an irrelevant gesture. What techniques do we do to prove your innocence? Yeah. So so with them, that sorry, that was it. So so with this, these two. I mean, the father is he was beat up in prison. He's black and blue, literally, and. You can see the absolute just terror in his in his face, you know, and you think that's got to go some to, to be an act. Now the the guy that I think did it, he was one of the one of the three servants. It's chilling. It's really chilling. And I'll send you. I'll send you it. I'm most in episode four. There's a thing called duping delight, duper's delight, mm. duping delight, and it's when we get ahead in some way. Let's say you find twenty quid on the floor. And there's no way you're going to hand it in to anybody. You go, oh, I'm in. Like, like I went to Sainsbury's self-serve once and I put a fiver in and it gave me change for 20 quid. <laughs> so I was said the right thing. Um, <laughs> uh, so, um, <laughs> I'm in <a> human. <laughs> yeah. um, no, but seriously, um, I did. So, so with Dupin Delight, we have this smile comes across our face. And this guy... He's talking to the cameras about how sorry he is that this this daughter was was dead, but he's beaming, you know, he's he's smiling. So you've got two contradictory emotions. Mm. And then there's a famous case in America with a woman called Sa um, um, Sandra Smith, I think it is. And eight days after a kids are murdered, she says she was carjacked by three guys and held at gunpoint, and they shot the kids. And she's doing this press conference. I think it's in Arkansas, so it's quite in the, in the, in the South of America. 
and the husband's completely innocent. So he's talking to the cameras and you can see him like, please, please help us. Mm. Um, she did it. She shot the kids and took the handbrake off and let the car roll into the river. And she's to camera and you've got to have some balls to do it. Yeah. She's to camera going, please, please help, help. But when, when she's interviewed a few days later, she's saying the worst part was seeing the blood coming out of their ears and their eyes and all that. But then she smiles and it's a really chilling smile. Whoa. So sometimes it's so blatant. Yeah. It's like you'd have what's called bad character. So you'd say, for example, you're dealing with a prolific burglar, like there's one particular person. So when I used to take people out on, on like ride alongs who were, who were just observing, they were amazed at how they had a perception of what the police is like. But when you've dealt with somebody 20, 30 times, you've got this rapport with them. So they think you should be talking either down to them or talking to them in a stern way. Um, but one particular guy, you know, I was talking to him and he, 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 I mean, for example, he would just admit everything. Yeah, this this guy. Some some people do. You know, they just say, yeah, I did that, did that. Why did would they that. do that? The, 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 what they see as they play a game, right? And if they're caught fair and square, they'll just admit it. Um, but if one, one particular person, um, they'd had quite a lot of um, offences, not been convicted of quite a lot of burglaries. This is somebody different. Um, and what you used to do was you'd have you'd have your evidence here, and then you'd say to somebody, so you'd almost put the trap down. Mm -hmm. You'd say, so, so let's say you had a, a, let's say you had a history of fifteen burglaries mm -hmm. convictions. Mm -hmm. I'd say, do you consider yourself to be an honest person, Jack? And you'd go, yeah, it's okay. I'd go, so how do you account for these previous fifteen convictions? Right. So you so you, it, it, it sounds a bit harsh, but you're making that person you're undermining them. Yeah, because you, you're there to prove points of law. You're going got yeah, got yeah, got you, got you, got. So, you, so like theft, you know, officially the offence of theft takes place when it. So if the person says, "I'm going to go in there and nick that food," they've committed theft, but they can't prove it. So that's why they wait for you to walk out. But it's it's it, you've got to prove in in law. So every offence has got points to prove, and that's what you do as a policeman. Um, did so, you ever? Did you ever do the interrogation? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So forces like the Met, they tend they have what they call civilian investigators. Um, but yeah, so basically once once I'd arrested somebody, um, so that's why really if I was still in the job and I came to the Met, I really having those skills would be quite valuable because most cops now that are coming into the job, they won't be trained in it. Because they've got because they'll just come in, give the statement over and resume back on the streets. Wow. Um so I've got a twenty year sort of history of of interrogation. What's yeah. the most memorable interrogations that you ever did that you can recall? Um, I find this fascinating. These police interrogations. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you one. It comes straight to mind. I was on an afternoon shift, and Tesco rang up and said, "There's a guy in store. He's barefoot." He just got. He put a fiver in. He got changed for a twenty, and we were. We're right. <laughs> hey, he took his shoes and socks off. And uh, it's me. So so anyway, we got there, and this guy. There's something creepy about him. There's not many people in my career that I thought, I'm scared of you. Right. So me and my mate turned up and I was like, look, mate, blah, 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 policy. You know, if, if there's glass on the floor, things like that, they're scared of getting sued. Oh, so he hadn't done anything other than being in there with his with shoes and socks, socks off. off. Okay. But the security, he was giving security a bit of, a bit of slight, you know, a bit of, a, yeah. you know, a bit of crap. So he won't leave, basically. Mm. So we were there just to kind of assist security. And um, in fact, this is... This is an example of how you think someone's done it and they haven't actually. But anyway, long story short, it, it kicks off a little bit. So we end up arresting him to prevent the breach of the peace. Take him back to custody. So as I'm booking him in, he goes, I've planted a device at a certain police station. Right. I went, what? Right. He goes, I'm X bomb disposal. He says, I was dishonorably discharged for trying to kill my commanding officer and blow him up. And you say, like, Animal Lecter. And I'm like, mate, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just booking his property in. Anyway, he went, all right then. So anyway, long, later on in the evening, I got called by custody. Can you come back down? This guy's going bananas. And he literally, he stripped himself naked and he was running from one end of the cell to the other. Like... All his head was bleeding. What, smashing his head against the yeah, wall? Yeah, because he he'd obviously got mental health issues. So well, there's certain clothing that you can put on people that are self-harming. You can't rip it. It's like, like a straitjacket. Yeah. 
Anyway, the sergeant said to me, he said, what's up with you? I went, there's something not right about this guy. And he's like, well, we're in the Ministry of Defence up then. Because you have what's called an almanac. It's all like secret phone numbers. So I rang up. I saw it's, it's, um, it's PC Stanton from Dormishire Place. I says, um, I've got a situation here. I just want to find out what's what. So anyway, about two hours later, um, get a phone call back. Um, no, sorry, that was it. Yeah, got a phone call back. They said, yes, he was. He was in the, he was bomb disposal. He's like, like special forces, whatever. And he was, he was kicked out. He, he had a, um, a bust up with his colonel and he planted an IED, but, but they dis discovered it, right? So then this, it was because allegation was another police station that gets evacuated, like something off die hard. Yeah. Right. Nothing in there whatsoever. So I go back and open the latch in the cell and this guy's just sitting like, like that. And he looks up and goes like, I went. Wink there. Cause he, he basically played me like a fiddle. But why did he want to do that? Just because he could. Narcissist, just textbook narcissist or, or, or even a psychopath. What? So he's, he's planted that little seed with you. No, so he's given me a little bit of truth. Yeah. 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 Knowing that I'll probably go and check it. Yeah. So then the likelihood of the next bit, the be. next bit, be not being so because I know that he's got that knowledge. Yeah. So I, so I, he paid me. So he's told you one truth and then a lie. So when you discover the first one's the truth, that means you're going to gives it more cute. Cu you're going to assume the next. Because one's if they true. if they go, never heard of the guy. Yeah. Then You'll you be go, like liar. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. But that's that's an example of like when I got played. And he's he's running and hitting his head on the wall. To, to to make himself just, more dangerous than yeah yeah just to, 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 just because he's not all there he's not yeah he's got issues obviously yeah. yeah um but when you looked up it was like it was just like something off 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 silence of a lambs just looked up and went Wait. and looked back down but fuck but what yeah, did you do after that <laughs> you just have to wind down right because obviously he eventually got kicked out yeah I think he only got he only got done for a couple of public order offences really so yeah because there's, there's not really anything we could do but. But yeah, chilling, really chilling. That's probably the most, most creepiest person that I've that I came across.